Welcome everyone to a special edition of the weekly meetup at Story Trading. We got Dan Carlson back to review his VIP picks with a new pick. And oh, by the way, happy Father's Day to everyone. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, before we get started, disclaimer, Story Trading is not investment advisor. Neither are our guests, unless they explicitly say otherwise. Investing in securities involves significant risk of loss. This recording is, uh, this presentation is being recorded. Parts of it will be on our social media. Um, before we get started with Dan, I want to point out we just relaunched our website, so the format's a little bit different. Um, when you go to storytrading.com, you'll see a little hamburger uh, menu on the top right, and then you can get to our VIP performance there and VIP events. Uh, we also have a sign up for our app, which is coming out in August. So make sure to go to storytrading.com and put your email address there to be first in line to get access to our new app. So what you do, if you do go to storytrading.com and, and click on performance, you'll see we've highlighted for tonight Dan's picks over here. Um, and I've summarized them for you in a slide. So his picks uh, so far at Story Trading for four stocks, TFFP, IMB, ATOM, HJLI is on awesome 56% average return. Um, and you can see the peak numbers are very high. Uh, also, if you were a great trader, um, so with that, Dan, I want to turn it over to you to give us an update on these four stocks. I'll stop my share and then, um, I think you'll have a new pick for us later too. So go ahead, Dan. Thank you for joining us. All right. Thanks. Um, appreciate you having me on again. Um, you know, last time, I think it was mid February, um, I was on and, uh, you know, basically everything in microcap got crushed since then. So. I have not lost my enthusiasm for any of the names, um, and uh, and they all seem to have put in something resembling bottoms. But uh, certainly, uh, it's been a been an interesting last four months since I last spoke with you all. So, um, starting uh, I guess alphabetically, uh, Adamira, um, that stock. It, it, you know, as you say, a good trader uh, could have done very well. I actually, you know, for my premium guys, I was selling a lot of stock in the 40s, even though I like it just because it got way ahead of itself. Um, I bought it, bought that back, you know, in the 20s and then uh, I backed up the truck at 15. Um, not much fundamentally has changed, but there was an incredible buying opportunity after the uh, most recent earnings call because the CEO um, he's, he's typically a terrible presenter and he he did uh, true to form presented quite terribly and and bashed the heck out of his own stock down to 15 bucks which was um, was painful but it, it created a great buying opportunity uh, you know th this is really all about this company is really all about the future and signing contracts to put their, product into fabrication facilities for microchips and it's a multi-year process to sign a contract and it's a multi-year process to go from signed contract to actually um, having chips out with uh, with their um, process involved in the production thereof. Um, they've got one joint development agreement signed and uh, that agreement we don't know who it's with but uh, you know it's with a very large company. It should be enough to make them profitable at some point in the future, I think you're you're looking at about a year or so time from now when you'll start to get uh, royalty revenue from that. Um, hopefully, um, the stock. Uh, there's been lots of rumors that uh, there's going to be another JDA joint development agreement signed imminently. Uh, the company tried to dispel that in an awkward manner. It didn't uh, on the last conference call when they said there's nothing in, in the final stages and. And it, it was a weird thing. The CEO basically meant that the lawyers were not papering it yet. Uh, the market interpreted it, interpreted it immediately as there's nothing close to going to the lawyers. And then in private conversations, he says, oh no, we've got a couple of deals that are close. We just don't have anything with the lawyers. So I said that. So, so he bashed the stock pretty good, but the reality is the process is rapidly coming close to broader adoption. And I think you're going to see some announcements over the second half of the year. Uh, I, I predicted early in the year that you'd, you'd get at least uh, two more, I believe is what I said. And, and I'm sticking with that in my mind. Um, the next time they sign a joint development agreement, the stock's going to go back up close to 50 bucks would be my guess. So I, I continue to be very, uh, 
positive on it. And, um, and it's just a, I, I call it a FOMO stock. I'm not selling it, uh, you know, at, at any time soon, just a fear of missing out on the next big move. And when it does move, it's going to go a lot higher, I think. Uh, yeah. So the next stock alphabetically is Hancock Jaffe, um, which is down, I think, the air thinks it's 7% since, since, uh, since I talked about it in February. Um, it's still trading slightly higher than cash value. Um, there's been no news of significance. Um, the, the whole deal here is the Vino valve, which is a, it's an artificial valve that's put in your leg for um, when your valves fail. Um, and it's going, it's actually, I do believe there's been news since we spoke. It was approved the IDE, the Investigational Drug Exemption, I think is what that stands for, was approved by the FDA and they will be going into human testing, I believe it's next month. Um, I think they have 20 centers lined up now. The, the product looks like it's going to be incredibly well received. There's nothing else in the market here. Uh, the chief scientist um, is excellent and he's going, he's got a lot of uh, enthusiasm from his colleagues. Um, I firmly expect the product to, to work and to work in a big way and to command a lot of market share um, in what could be a, a billion dollar plus market. Um, the stock has continually suffered from an incredibly uh, unliked CEO uh, and that, that tends to keep the overhang here. Um, you know, I've been asked why I, I'm investing in a company where I personally, you know, don't, don't think the CEO is, is great. And I, I don't think he's great with capital markets, but I think he's fine at running a company. Um, they have so much cash. I don't worry about the capital market side of this anymore. It's all about the product development um, and then selling that product to one of the larger device companies out there. I think you're, you're just on a ticking time bomb. I think you're probably 12 months away from starting to see some of the preliminary results from the trials. And once the trial results uh, on first in human in the U S start coming out, that's when the large guys, if, if the product works, which all per all signs point to it works. Um, once those results start coming out, that's when people start sniffing around for an acquisition. So it's a real acquisition play in my mind. It's crazy cheap. And um, I think you can make sometime next year or 18 months, three to five X on your money. Um, meanwhile, it's trading at cash value. So your downside, I think is, is fairly limited here. So, th so that's that one. Um, Immune is next up, ticker INMB. Uh, they, um, they actually had the most interesting news of, of any company um, I've seen recently last week. And uh, I say it's interesting because it didn't do much for the stock, but it, it, it's pretty exciting. They took a loan out from Silicon Valley Bank. And with that money, they repurchased warrants that uh, existed. They represent 10% of the company. Um, those warrants were from uh, when they initially acquired the drug they're developing, they, they, you know, the company they licensed it from got warrants for 10% of Immune. And it wasn't 10% of that time, it was a 10% at the time they exercised. So meaning if they raised a hundred million dollars um, and then the warrants were exercised, they still get 10% of the company post the financing. So it was an extremely um, onerous warrant, I guess is a good word for it. Uh, certainly had some warrant overhang. Uh, so getting rid of the warrant is obviously wonderful. It just removes 10% future dilution from the company. But the fact that you've got a management team that's significantly invested in this personally, uh, are the, you know, as a group own about 30% of the company, I believe, um, and they're willing to lever up the balance sheet with a loan to take back shares, it kind of speaks, um, I call it a mic drop. It's like, yeah, we think our data is good. Boom, you know, um, they have data coming in August from their phase phase one Alzheimer's trial. Alzheimer's is a crazy hot space right now. If you look at what Cassava's done or Anavis, um, and obviously it all started with Biogen, um, you know, recently getting approval for their drug. 
uh, you know, they, they believe their data, which is open label, so they know what their data is, right? They believe the data they're going to present is game changing and they're willing to lever up the balance sheet with the full knowledge that they'll be raising money in the future to pay off that loan. Um, they're willing to lever up the balance sheet in front of the data that sort of says, uh, yeah, we, we have something really exciting coming at you in August. So it's a big position for me. And uh, I really think um, I, I'm just, you know, the, the CEO is incredibly excited. I'm just going to share his enthusiasm, put it that way. A couple other catalysts they have coming. Uh, they have another drug actually called Inkmune, which is for, um, is for your uh, NK cells. And it's, a, it's entering phase one cancer trial. Uh, they, they have approval for the trial. They're still waiting to dose their first patient. They actually had one lined up, but the patient had congestive heart failure. So they re ended up rejecting them from the trial. So um, any day now they're gonna say, yeah, we've dosed our first patient. Um, NK programs out there are trading for much higher than Immune's uh, market cap all on their own. So you, you've got a potential nice boost from that program alone. And that's, that's gonna come soon. And then they also have um, a, a COVID program that's been going ridiculously slowly in terms of patient recruitment. Um, yeah, there's been obviously a lot of companies trying to recruit COVID patients. So it's understandable, it's tough to recruit patients, but all signs uh, point to um, what they're doing, uh, being effective and helping in COVID. And you should get some sort of word about that trial in July, they've been pointing to July as the date to get a, a go, no go to enter the second part of the trial. Um, it's interesting. I, I'm excited about the program, but COVID is not really a great, uh, great area to be focused on right now with the number of patients getting reduced and vaccines around, et cetera. So uh, I don't think the street has much value placed on that. And um, I, don't, I don't think that news can be really broadly market impactful in either way, but I, I fully expect them to get a, a positive result out of that. Um, there's been lots of studies of TNF inhibitors, patients on TNF inhibitors and COVID, and they all have reduced effects of COVID, and this is a TNF inhibitor, so stands that uh, COVID would be reduced effect in their, in their trial. So um, that's immune. I think this stock, uh, come August, is a double from here at least. It may sell off on the news like it did the last time, but it's going to sell from higher levels in, in my opinion. Um, and eventually it's going to just go higher in, in a big way. Uh, and then the last one, TFF uh, stock has been frankly disappointing. Um, I think that's from the guidance from the company about being involved in a phase two uh, vaccine program. As a refresher, they, they take drugs and they turn them into powderized versions so they can be inhaled as opposed to injected or in a liquid or a, a pill form. So instead of being digested or injected, you can um, take them in a puffer. Uh, people kind of look at it as a biotech, but it's really not. It's just a drug delivery platform. Um, the CEO had, had said, yeah, we fully expect to be in the phase two COVID vaccine program. And it's still quite possible. Um, they've been talking to Moderna. I know that uh, Jeffrey Wiseman, who's uh, out of UPenn and was one of the key guys for the mRNA vaccine programs. Um, you know, he basically developed mRNA vaccines. He's now on their advisory board. Um, you know, he, he's the one that created the Moderna vaccine with his partner. So, you know, they, there's a good chance they're involved in it, but it's taken longer. And I think that uh, expectations, you know, mine included, were ahead of themselves. So the stock's been, a, been kind of piggish as a result of that. Uh, but at, at the same time, you've got a number of other programs um, and they're all advancing. And um, as the CEO said in the last conference call, you know, they, they, anytime there's a bake-off, they have won, you know, period. Uh, and they've yet to fail to powderize a drug. So. Um, I, I think the I think the time to get involved in this stock is, is great. The timing is great because I think you know, as I say, it's it's, it's suffered, uh, but I think the COVID expectations are now out of it, and you've got a, a number of positive catalysts in the second half of the year. And I don't really want to walk through all the programs, but I will say that their uh, voriconazole 
um, associated with TACR Limus, they have multiple programs, sorry, TACR Limus program, um, which they highlighted in a KOL call last week. They should have data from that soon. Uh, the data should be very positive. They'll be entering phase two later this year. That looks like a billion dollar drug on its own. That, that looks like a, a you know, company making drug alone. Um, and I think that, uh, I think there's been people sniffing around at those programs to partner with them. They, their intention is to partner their internal programs, tacrolimus and boriconazole. And I think that will happen um, as, they, as they start getting phase two data. So you start getting down the road with these programs and, uh, and um, they look very exciting. Um, and the, the other thing I think that I, I didn't mention, but I probably should is uh, that TFF and Inmune both subsequent to our last call raised a significant amount of money. So, um, there's actually I'm not sure about Inmu. They might have done it before or after the call. It's kind of I can't, I can't remember when they announced it, etc. But but basically, the, you look at those companies; they all have pretty strong balance sheets at this point in time, and there's no uh, financing overhang for any of them. So that's sort of is my overview. Hope that that suffices. Thank you, Dan. That was an awesome update on those four VIP picks. Make sure to follow us on Story Trading, YouTube, Story Trading, Twitter. Really helps us out, increase our reach. So appreciate it if you do that. And thank you very much, everyone. We will see you next week.